Hello, welcome to the Ponderings Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Henry Bergson's concept of intuition as memory. These podcast episodes can be found on any podcast hosting site, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor. The Ponderings Podcast episodes can also be found on YouTube. In this podcast, I'm going to be uh, continuing to elaborate on Henry Bergson's philosophy, specifically his theory of pure perception in regards to memory. Episode 9 and 10 will be reviewed a bit before we get into the content of this episode. This episode serves as a continuation of episode 9 and 10, and next week's episode will also cover another aspect of Henry Bergson's philosophy. So I'm hoping that you stay tuned to this little Henry Bergson series. So to begin this episode, I'm going to do a little recap of last week's episode on intuition. Um, So how do we get to know the thing in itself? Bergson posits that there are two different ways of acquiring knowledge. One is by way of our human intelligence. This is our tendency to categorize and label our experience in order to make sense of it. This is intelligence that is guided by needs and relevance. So things that are relevant. Um, We categorize, we label the things that are relevant outside of us or that we perceive. Whatever comes into our perception, whatever we sense, we sort of categorize, we name, we number um, in order to make sense of what's happening. So remember, Henry Bergson's philosophy is a process philosophy rather than a substance philosophy. He sees everything as a sort of a process. Everything is in a process of becoming. There is a continuity of becoming. And so of these two types of knowledge, there's the one that's an analysis that's gathered through synthesis of perspectives it's analytic and then there's the one that is intuition which i'll sort of give a recap of that but yeah bergson states that this habitual intelligence through synthesis does not give us absolute knowledge or knowledge of the things in themselves the only way to know things in themselves is through our intuition so for bergson again intuition is the true empiricism the true way to acquire knowledge of the universe, our experience, our human experience. So this transition of analysis towards intuition is what Bergson calls the turn of experience. So in order to get absolute knowledge, he believes that we need to sort of have an experience of entering into intuition, entering into the duration Intuition is the process of entering into the thing instead of going around it from the outside, like in analytic knowledge. Similar to sympathy or empathy, we're putting ourselves in the place of others, or it's a sort of seizing of the other or a seizing of oneself. Intuition is the process of entering into or installing ourselves within duration. So what is this duration for Bergson? Um, We can think of duration as a sort of temporal progress, a continuity of experience without juxtaposition. It's like a, a conservation of the past. So it's the past that is conserved in one moment, then it's added to the, that, uh, it's conserved as one moment that is added to the old moment plus the one that came immediately before. So it's the one that becomes one increased by one so it's one that is becoming this isn't it's in this process of becoming and it's continually increased by one this increase this increased momentum is sort of that addition that um novel addition into the process um so yeah memory conserves this past It allows for difference in present experiences. Accumulating all those past experiences, but we're still taking in like selective information while adding it to the past. Duration can be likened to memory, 
as a sort of prolongation of the past into the present. So duration will be that um, the bringing or the seizing of memory into the present of all the past occasions, bringing it into the present, into like the subjective unity of the present, if that makes any sense. So before we get into um, memory as intuition, we're sort of going to talk about the dualistic nature of matter and memory. So Bergson stated that matter and memory are frankly dualistic, since they both affirm the reality of matter and the reality of spirit. Uh, he does not want us to focus on dualism as such. He is just stating the dualism apparent in the view of external perception. So external perception creates this sort of duality of there's matter and then there's the representation of matter. But he's trying to sort of get rid of that, not just have materialism, but also not just have like idealism or representationalism. Because external perception is sort of what creates this opposition between representation and matter. Um, Bergson's theory of pure perception attempts to go beyond both realism and idealism in regards to our knowledge of things. To say that our knowledge of things in its pure state takes place within the thing that it represents. His first hypothesis is that all we sense are images. So what does Bergson mean by images? He uses the term image as an intermediate position between realism and idealism. So it's something that's in the middle of those extremes, the one being matter and then the other one being just representation, memory, things like that. He's trying to put those two together. So the concept of image for Bergson, he uses this concept to refute the false belief of realism and materialism that matter is a thing with a hidden power to produce representations in us. So Bergson, he says that matter has no hidden power. It is only image. But he also criticizes idealism since idealism reduces matter to only the representations we have of it, right? So image then is not just mere representation but neither is it mere perception or sense received from matter. Image differs from representation as how it's like usually posited by idealists and realists, but it does not differ in terms of the nature of representations as image or memory of durations. So the image is less than a thing, but more than a representation. Again, he's trying to get rid of this dualistic thinking and try to um, introduce more of a process thinking where all these things are in a sort of dynamic relationship rather than just like there's you know two separate substances matter and uh, representation he wants us to see it more as a dynamic process dynamic relationship between the two Perception is continuous with images of matter in that it is attached to the real. So again, there's this relationship happening. The images are attached to the matter. Not because it's like a representation or an, an ideal of the matter, but it's something, it's a um, exchange that's going on. There's a transition happening. So Bergson has a theory of pure perception. In this theory, the image of a material thing becomes a representation. Again, there's a transition from the image as being in itself to its being for me. It's a relationship um, that I, as, as the observer, impact. My interaction sort of, it definitely has an impact it has it affects outcome or the image of the being in itself or of the process that I am relating to that I am um, exchanging with communicating with perception does not add anything new to the image but rather it subtract it subtracts from it like how we are only able to have absolute knowledge of a part of duration, not the whole of duration. 
representation is only a part of the image. It is a selection of the image. This selection refers only to what our body deems as necessary information. Representation is the slicing up or selection of only what is relevant and necessary in the image of the duration. In order to conserve efficiency and function for the body, the organism, there's a transition from the image being just as it is for itself, and then it's how it transitions to it being for me, because I am sort of seizing it. I am taking it into my, myself. I am installing myself in that duration, and that duration is becoming a part of me. We're only able to take parts of duration, not the whole of duration. We're only able to take the parts that are relevant to us. Yeah, that are relevant to us, but also the ones that are necessary. We're always constantly being bombarded by all this information, but our conscious um, perception, our conscious um, observation, our participation is selective with the information that we take into ourselves. For Bergson, this pure perception is seen, is seen as necessary poverty, a selection amidst the infinite amounts of information in the duration. So we're looking at this as a sort of selective representation as habitual intelligence. The necessary poverty of perception is the opposite of intuition. It is a result of human intelligence that was explained earlier. So this sort of necessary poverty or this necessary selection is a result of categorizing, labeling, synthesizing perspectives. Um, memory and perception serve the necessary function of breaking phenomena down into selective representations of the image or duration. Intuition on the other hand, is actually unrepresentative, as opposed to the habitual use of intelligence in humans. So our habitual human intelligence, it categorizes matter as representation, image, and intuition abolishes this. And the images of matter are experienced as mobile vibrations. So the way we would experience image not as a representation but as a part of duration we experience it as vibrations as feelings as things that we take into ourselves but it's no it's not representative it's more of a um experience of that present duration we're entering into that duration without labeling it or categorizing it. This experience of intuition for Burson is the image of duration as a memory of matter. So even this mobile vibration is a memory of matter because we're taking it into ourselves, but at each moment it's sort of Duration is still going on. It's still happening. It's still moving. The image of duration is a memory of matter rather than a perception of matter. So for Bergson, the method of intuition would be the same as the method of memory. Intuition and memory are the same thing. Intuition as entering into duration. Memory would be entering into duration as well. But this time it's sort of with the concept of image of duration. So like how Bergson differentiated space and time, he also differentiates memory into, do, into two different kinds of memory. The first kind of memory is the habit memory, which is formed by obtaining certain automatic repetitive behaviors. It is the acquisition of sensory motor mechanisms. So habitual human intelligence would consist of this kind of habit memory. Um, the second kind of memory is what Bergson calls pure memory. This pure memory consists of the survival or continuity of personal memories that is unconscious. So this sort of reservoir that we have of our personal um, relationships, interactions with the universe, 
throughout our con continuity of experience. This would be our pure, this would be pure memory. It's just memory as is. Habit memory is aligned with bodily perception, whereas pure memory is not specifically reduced to being aligned to bodily perception. So habit memory, it would, again, have to do with things that are categorical, that are labeling, numbering, even our just our body um, habitually knowing how to perform a specific task. That could be considered a habit memory. Anything that is synthesizing perspectives through representation, but pure memory, it this could include like maybe like trauma or something, something that is just a p part of the past that sort of constitutes our being as we move forward into the future. Everything, every past occasion, every past um, duration that is relevant and a, a part of us moves into the present and sort of keeps differentiating itself in the future as well as like unifying itself with all the things that it takes in if that makes any sense so bergson has um an example to illustrate what he means by this differentiation between habit memory and pure memory and this example is the image of the memory cone so picture the image of the cone so we have a cone it's um how a cone is constructed you know it's like has no sharp edges only like the pointy tip and then like it kind of goes out um and then there's a flat surface so the in this flat surface we could call it a plane um so the inverted cone we'll picture it like sort of upside down where the pointed end is inserted into the plane so and then this plane we're going to see it as the plane of actual representation of the universe so this, the plane is the universe. The cone is supposed to symbolize memory. So at the base of the cone is unconscious memories, the oldest surviving memories, which come forward to our consciousness in the form of dreams. And as we descend down the cone, so as we descend from the base of the cone to its pointed end, there is an indefinite number of past occasions, past occasions that ordered that are that are ordered in reference to the distance or nearness it has to the present to the present moment so my body would sort of be this pointed end of the cone that would be the present perception it's interacting like currently with the duration with the universe so this present perception is the image of my body that participates in the plane of my actual representation of the universe. So memory is sort of the way we contemplate, but at the same time, it's both contemplation and participation in this sort of, in the duration. So with that, it's like the image of the cone is a dynamic process or mobility. Again, the image of the cone is supposed to symbolize memory or it's like it's illustrating memory and memory is the same as intuition for Bergson. So memories descend down the cone from the past to the present perception and action, the which is the participating image of my body with my representation of the universe. This descent of memory means that true memory is progressive for Bergson. This progression of memory takes place between pure memory which is immobile and contemplative, and the plane, where actions take place, where duration happens. So contemplation here is the integral movement of memory between thought and action. So memories is that cone, and the plane is it being integrated into du the duration. So thought for Bergson is pure memory as a singular image that's moving forward. And the forward movement is illustrated in the image of the cone. And the cone, it can be likened to a telescope in that the lens of the telescope, it rotates 
in order to retrieve an image of the night sky. This rotation of the cone allows us to bring singular images into view. So the rotation is the key to Bergson's concept of virtuality, this rotation and contraction that happens as we sort of focus in on what's relevant or focus in on what we are selecting or slicing into in the duration. Um, virtuality is the movement from the cloud of inner penetration into singular moments of duration. You can sort of picture the Milky Way as this cloud of inner penetration. There's a lot of complex relationships occurring and rotation um, or virtuality is sort of us um, zeroing in to or descending into star systems, planets, sharper focus into the singular events. So from inner penetration to fragmentation or unity to multiplicity, universality to singularity. This movement is always potential or virtual for Bergson. And the reverse process is also potential or virtual. So fragmentation to inner penetration, multiplicity to unity, singularity to universality. Um, the second movement would be contraction, but again, rotation, contraction, these are, that's virtuality for Bergson. And this concept I'm still trying to grapple with as well. Um, so if I didn't really make myself clear, um, I'll probably try in the next episode once I read more on it. But again, we're seeing memory as sort of uh, likened to what Bergson uh, conceptualized to be intuition, this entering into duration. And duration is the temporal process. It's the it's the dynamic process, the um, the ground of being. Well, everything is duration for Bergson, and intuition is a way for us to gain absolute knowledge of this duration because we're not abstracting ourselves from it into a sort of analytic. Intuition is sort of a direct way of um, knowing or participating with the duration in which we're already participating in. So in the next episode, I'm going to be talking about Henry Bergson's creative evolution as an emergence from these two movements of rotation and contraction, the potential or virtual. So yeah, even though this the last concept, virtuality, was a little um, confusing, I'll definitely be going into it more in the next episode about creative evolution. But yeah, so we should keep in mind that the observer is a participant in the universe. So we cannot objectively know the thing in itself because the act of observation cannot be abstracted from the thing observed. There's always a relationship that is occurring. Even we can we can never just observe something outside of ourselves. Like we're always observing it subjectively. It's very hard for us to have an objective knowledge of anything. But yeah, I'll, I'll continue talking about Bergson for the next episode, and that will probably be the final episode on Bergson for now. But hopefully you are enjoying this little series so far. Um, thank you for listening, and stay tuned. <laughs>